referee Rudy Gluckner taking that last look around the field. And in just a few moments, we're going to have the final of the ninth World Cup Championship. And we're away. Italy kicking off. Italy kicking off and immediately sending three men forward. Bonicenia, Riva and Mazzola. Brazilians will soon, very, very soon, adopt that familiar four-man forward line that we've seen so much of. And here is one of their stars immediately. Herzino, number seven, taking on Sacchetti. Here's Gerson. To his left, Clodoaldo, one of the real discoveries of this competition. Pelle goes down for the first time. The tackle by Cicisti. But the referee takes that early. There goes Pelle. Straight into touch. Crowd still fighting into this piece in actual fact. There's still some late comers getting in. It's been difficult for them to get here this morning. They closed the road leading to the stadium around about 11 o'clock. Here's Pelle. Paseo, Pelle going hard for the return. Just easy covering it all the way. Albert Tozzi, the goalkeeper. Wurtnich picking up Jomandini. Chased right across the park by Cosseo. Here's the CC. It's a team. Wurtnich is very fine right back. Mike Solner. For Italy. Moving around nicely. There's Rita. Oh, the left foot. By golly, what a shot. What a shot that was from... What a shot that was from Riva, Luigi Riva. And Felix delivered his shot immediately to show what he can do. Quickly, Bobby, what a shot that was. A tremendous opening by Italy, a very, very good shot by Riva. And Felix uh, showed good anticipation of just touching the shot over the bar. So now Brazil coming away again. Carlos Alberto. The best of the back men in this Brazil line. Just the number eight. Loose one, but it's found Pelé all the way back for Clodoaldo. Here's Carlos Alberto. Far post ball, no problem at all. In fact, it's gone for a, a throw in. I think Bergnitz rather expected a throw in there. Uh, Go kick, rather. But the end effect is just the same. Albertozzi hitting a very long ball. It's Everaldo picking up Rivellino. Rivellino playing an almost orthodox left wing game at the moment. Coming back deep though and looking for it. Piazza Wilson, his captain number four, Carlos Alberto, open on this side. Through ball for Pelle, and Pelle's leg whipped away by number 10, Bertini. Two number 10s together. Bertini for Italy, who has been given the job of handling El Rey Pelle, number 10. The first free kick situation then to test the Italian. A fair way out, but you can never be sure with the Brazilians in free kick situations. Pelle is over the ball, also number 11, Rivellino is over here as well. Rivellino with a shot, bends it. The thought away, he bent the ball to score his first goal of the competition. Everaldo. Clodoaldo, number five. Picking up Gerson. The Italians uh, the Italian funneling away from these men. The Zillings already beginning to earn a fair amount of dominance in the midfield area. Carlos Alberto. There goes Paseo in. And it was Rosato, number eight, getting the ball away from the foot of Costello. Costello, the man they call the white fellow. Carlos Alberto, the corner quickly taken. A Mazzola for Italy. Still having been forced deep into defense here is Everaldo. Number 16. Not a bad shot. And that's over the line for a corner. Well, the linesman this side has given it positively. Ballet pointing to him. 
But the referee, Rudy Glockner of East Germany, taking no notice. Got a guinea, a pretty loose one. And there goes Erzino. Erzino, smeared down by Bacchetti. Fell in, the foul has been given. Roar of the crowd, drowning referee Glockner's whistle for a moment. Five minutes gone. And again, a very, very dangerous free kick situation. Fele is there, placing the ball. Number 11 is the fellow with the left foot, Rivellino. Number 8 is Jerson, now directing operation. Identifiable, a slightly balding top to his head. Now there are three Brazilians at the line, so Feo's in there. So is Erzino. As Pele shapes up, Rivellino. Way, way up into the top deck of the stand. But Bobby Moore, always dangerous when Brazil have this free kick situation. Brazil always looks dangerous when Rivellino's taking free kicks. And it's always interesting to see that they always put two or three of their own forwards in the lineup. And once the free kick is about to be taken, they all burst off in different directions and hope to make a gap in the wall. So that, that, that time, not a particularly good effort by Rivellino. So oh, the Italians, having lived through that moment of peril, try pushing the ball forward into the Brazilian half, but it doesn't stay there very long. That's Pacchetti cutting it up for three. Mazzola now. Mazzola, Riva. Mazzola going hard for the return ball, and Carlos Alberto laying off it. Mazzola trying one. Clodo Aldo is number five. Youngster, only in the side for a very short time. Jerson, Jerson constantly looking for everything in midfield, waiting for Alberto to move to his right, but picking up Clodo Aldo inside. Jerson again, Can still use Alberto, there he is. It's an awkward ball. Well, Albertozzi punching that one away. Seemed to me that he could have let it go. But it produces another dead ball situation. This time a corner, Rivellino, the man with the left foot. In the box, number 9, Corteo, number 10, Pelé. Seven years, Zeno is there. Jerson just moving into the box now. Well, an incredibly hard hit. Corner from Rivellino, and it would have needed a man on stilts at least 20 foot tall to get to that one. Eight minutes of this game, gone and no score. Here's Vizzi. Vizzi, captain of his club, Fiorentina. Pacchetti, Mazzola, two into Milan men together. And uh, Mazzola was brought down by number four, Alberto. The free kick. Four Pacchetti. Senior was under it, but tucked away. Now here's Vino, number seven, faced by Pacchetti. Vino, now Mazzola coming in as well. Vino still there, strong as a bull, this lad. Bundle down finally for the free kick. Carlos Albert with a short one for Plato Aldo. Carlos Alberto again, looking for Pelé, and the slippery turf already taking its first victim, that was Rivellino slipping. Desisti down, Everaldo at his gents quickly, is hurt, Gerson Bonistania, way across for Domingini, and Everaldo covering very well. Domingini. Picking up Desisti, and Desisti's leg whipped away by Clodo Aldo. Free kick then to Italy. Domingini over the ball. Looking forward into the box, there's Riva and Bonitegna. The way by Brito. A good little chip ball from Rivellino. 
Picking up Claude Aldo. Toseo down the line. Nazino's moved into the middle. Jerson. And is ready to start things going from the back. Alberto. Jerson. There's Toseo coming into the picture. Number nine. Now Claude Aldo. Tight group of four men setting things up. Alberto now going in behind the Italian. Offside flag is up. Offside against Pelé. Interesting to see that Jair is running off of his line quite a lot. And forget his, forget his following him. And when he does, Carlos Alberto has come three times in, into good positions. And it's very dangerous balls across the face of the goal. Alberto then has been certainly getting in behind them. And Bonicinio going, trying to get in behind Brazil now for Italy. Bonicinio will have to do a lot of lone running up the front. Yes, Eduardo. Brito for Gerson. Everaldo for Rivellino. Rivellino, who moving infield now, has done a fair bit of midfield playing for Brazil after Gerson was injured in that very first game. Alberto again. Was a Kenny cutting that out. Sissi, Riva trying to cut down the left side, that's broken for Benistani, and a good ball then for Riva. Riva, two on two, not a bad one, then testing this goalkeeper Felix, Luigi Riva. There was only one way to strike and that's with the left foot. A good break there by Riva, uh, I thought he might have been a little bit better if he'd have, if he'd have aimed more for the far post instead of shooting direct to goal where another forward was on rushing. Brazil coming back again then. Alberto, Carlos Alberto. The low ball for Toseo. And number five, tidying up, Shera. This is Jomankini. Jomankini playing on the right side, the middle four in this Italian lineup. Now as they attack, more or less looking like an orthodox right winger, Sissisi picking up Riva. On oh, a good turn, well away from Brito. Alberto going in. Riva already showing that he can uh, cause some trouble in this tense and what has often been described as a suspect Brazilian defense. Clodoaldo, number five. Erzino brought down from behind by number three, Pacchetti. The free kick then to Brazil. Throwing Tosteo all the way forward. Calais slightly deep behind him. Now Tosteo coming back. Claudio Aldo. Number five, Chera. Luigi Chera doing the sweeping up and the tidying up. Very highly skilled defender, this Chera. Tosteo back for Claudio Aldo. Claudio Aldo and Jerson wanting it. Here's the CC for Italy. Bonicini is slightly free forward. Pacchetti for Mazzola. Mazzola who made his debut against Brazil when these teams last met in 1963. Giomandini. Aiming for Bonicini and it's Alberto cutting it out. And again, Clodo Aldo there to pick up the loose pieces. Claudio Aldo for Jerson. Six men at the back at the moment for Brazil. And four men forward. Rivalino. The Brazilian finding it difficult at this moment anyway to escape the tight marking that Italy are putting on them. Bonicinia getting a with the ball in the face from Jerson. Number 20, Bonnie Senior, the scorer of Italy's first goal in the semi-final. And the chap who laid on the winner for Rivera, Giomandini. Long one, and that's a way over the bar off. He has the Wilson for a corner. Mazzola is going out to take it. 
Marcello, who could play for 45 minutes, I am pretty certain, knowing that he hasn't got to play for the next 45. Bacchetti. Little chip as Riva goes in. Now Mazzola. Desisti. Foul by... Foul by uh, Pelé. Indirect free kick. And nobody's sorted out in the Italian side exactly what they're going to do with this moment. 11 is Riva, 15. Mazzola, number three. Sacchetti. Mazzola over the ball now, although he has Domantini lurking behind. Mazzola over the ball, just to the right of the picture is Domantini. It's an indirect free kick. Therefore, it's got to be struck twice. Mazzola. Riva. Riva very close. There was a whistle, but I think it came from the crowd. A good free kick there by Italy and a very good effort by Riva. It was very interesting to see that all the Brazilian defence set themselves up for a shot at goal and left themselves very, very weak at the far post and they really got in there quite easily. Encouraging sign for Italian spectators then that the minor frailties of this Brazilian defence have already been slightly exposed. Not a criticism you can make of that man number four, Carlos Alberto. Number eight is Gerson now. And again, the Italians marking up tightly at the back. Lodo Aldo for Gerson. Erzino. Gerson again. Again for Pele. The sale. Running it too far. Joe Mangini tried his up for the pass to the goalkeeper. Burtnich. Tassisio Burtnich for Joe Mangini. Domingini, one of the players in the Cagliari League champion side. Everaldo keeping that in play very well for Brazil. The foul. Everaldo has Rivolina close to him, but it's the foul. Faced by Rosato. Facchetti tidying up. The long one out for Domingini. Domingini pass for Everaldo. It's three on three. Bonicinha. Bonicinha now. Try it too close. That surely was a foul. Piazza Wilson cutting across him, but no foul given. Well, the Italians broke well then. Three on three. Should have capitalized on it. Rivolino for Brazil. Everaldo coming on his left side. Forward in front of him is Tostale. In the middle, Herzino number seven. Pele number ten. Tostale with a cross ball. Back at away. Facchetti following that number seven. There he is. Facchetti following the number seven. Here's Zeno wherever he goes. Rivolino. Watch Pele now. What a beautiful goal for Pele. El Rey Pele. 100 goal for Brazil in World Cup competitions. And Brazil take this one nothing lead. Almost the sort of shot that he tried against Gordon Banks. Banks made the save for England when it was played down in Guadalajara. But Albertozzi had no chance with that one. A very simple goal there by Brazil, but marvellously taken by Pelli. It all just started from a simple throw in here. We can see Tostel take it. Rivellino just crushes a simple volleyball, but Pelli's up there like an eagle and a tremendous header. A wonderful goal by Brazil and a wonderful time to go into the lead. And I must say, it's the first bit of freedom that Pelli has had, but he made full use of it. So El Rey Pelle puts Brazil in front, one nothing. And Italy immediately striking back. At 9 minutes, 19 minutes of the first half gone. 26 minutes left to play. The sort of situation that the Brazilians carved from nothing with such telling effect so many times in the World Cup competitions in which they played. All nine of them. Alberto firing one high into the crowd. Having a quick look to see if his boots are still there. For a moment he might have thought the boot went with the ball. Now the Italians have got to come out and really attack if they're to pull themselves back into this game. One imagines that their thoughts were to have sneaked an early goal as they did against West Germany and protect it for the rest of the game. But now behind they've really got to come out and hammer to get back in the game. Mazzola. 
for Italy. Matrola's still in there with Dominguini on the far right, who's now covered up. Chip aimed for Bonitini up in a Piers of Wilson away. Justin then for Brazil. Waiting for men to run off the ball and finding again Carlos Alberto on this right side. Alberto not faced by an orthodox left flank forward by Italy. is given a lot of space to work in here. Rico for Carlos Alberto. Switching it to Gerson. Gerson Everaldo outside on the left. Not a bad ball to him either. Gerson again. Erzino, Erzino with Pelle, here's Pelle, trying to tempt the tackle, little chip trying to get past Bergnich, and Pelle finally committing the foul in some frustration, and letting the Italians off the hook, there he goes Pelle, Skipper Facchetti all across field for Giomandini, Giomandini who started with into the land, and is now with Cagliari. Here he is again. Rivellino has gone back with him. Good head away then by Rico. Riva quickly tackled from behind. Riva now with Herzino coming back to face him. The through ball for Mazzola. Brito got in his way. Carlos Alberto. Only one Brazilian player well forward at the moment is Costello. Now they're waiting for, four, for more men to move up. Gerson now for Brazil. Alberto in for Costello with flag offside. He came from an offside position. Number eight Rosato for five Chela for Italy. Brazilians back paddling quite slowly. Oh, a very poor pass. The foul. Pelé. Gerson. All the way back for Piazza Wilson. Picking up Everaldo. Piazza Wilson again. Nobody unmarked forward. Italian very quick to pick up the yellow shirt. Number eight, Rosato. Chasing off to number nine, Paseo. Here's Everaldo. Piazza Wilson. Way across field for Brito. Oh, what a mistake by Brito. Riva going in and Felix having to come way off his line to kick that away. Felix waving angry at his man. Brito, not the safest of defenders in the middle of that Brazilian defense. Here's Rivellino. Everaldo moving outside him and the flipperiness of the turf again robbing Rivellino as he ran. Number 13 for Liddy, Giomandini, will be robbed by Giacino. Well, it looked like obstruction. The Italians certainly thought it was. Again, I think the referee, Rudy Glockner, allowing for the slipperiness of the turf. The rain that we had earlier has stopped completely, but there's still no sign of any sun, although it's very humid, with low cloud hanging over this massive Azteca Stadium. Number 16, to see. Again, only two men forward, Bonicini and Riva. Rosato through, Brito getting the head away. Cut out by Mazzola. Bonicini is to his left, Cicci to his right, and Riva is forward. Oh, and a good job that Piazza Wilson, number three, didn't get a touch to that. Riva lurking very close to him, Felix gesticulating. But I don't think Felix would have got to that ball anyway. Everaldo again moving on that left side with no orthodox wingers to face the two fullbacks can really chase or the two Brazilian fullbacks can chase a long way forward with great confidence Rivellino getting the tackle from behind by number 10 Bertini Rivellino for the man the black moustache doesn't look as though he's going to try the left foot from the left side of the box. 
more a right-footed player's shot to curl around the left side of the defensive wall that will be put up. Pele is there. Rivellino is also there. Rivellino lined up to hit it direct with the left foot, although Pele is lined up as though he's coming in. It is Pele. Rivellino right in behind them. That was a fairly well-worked free kick, uh, Bobby. A very well taken free kick there by Brazil. Uh, everybody was expecting Pelé to curl the ball to the far post. He just knocked it wide of the wall for Rivellino. And it looked very much as though someone in the Italian wall might have got a deflection with their head. Now a free kick to the Italians. There's the score line. Pelé the scorer. And 19 minutes of the first half of this 1970 World Cup competition left to be played. Rosato, number eight. Thirteen, Giovinghini for Italy. Rather long and hopeful shot from Giovinghini. Pelé picking up Clodoaldo. Brazilians moving at their own pace constantly when they come forward and attack. Not being hurried into their work. Gerson not even bothering to go for it. Knew he couldn't get it. Giovinghini for Italy. Oh, good ball from Riva to Mazzola. Rito in. Mazzola's still there. And finally, Clodoaldo. He's chased hard by Boris Senior. Number five, Clodoaldo. And number 20, Boris Senior. Italy look very dangerous when they build up slowly. And when they're not build up to Riva, he's knocking balls off and playing very, very well indeed. And I hope the goal that they've just had scored against him doesn't stop them from altering their tactics because once or twice they've started to use far, far post balls and it's making it very difficult for Riva. And there's Pelé putting on the agony, putting on the style, having been brought down by number two, Leticio Bergnic, who is the first player in this game who gets his name into Rudy Glockner's book. Rudy Glockner immediately retiring Mario Medico and... Uh, knockout Jack, the two trainers and masseur of the Brazilian side to the touchline he is quite convinced that Pelé is nowhere near as badly hurt as he looks so the great man pulls himself back to his feet Brazil get on with the game with a free kick Gerson to take it although Rivellino has retired a full 12 yard run here he goes Rivellino well, he could do a lot better than that, as we've seen in the earlier part of the competition. And that ball being returned from row 20, I would think, of this vast Azteca Stadium. The ball going into the ditch, we've still got a hold up. Rivellino hasn't been particularly successful with his free kicks at the moment, when he's been shooting at goal, and I wonder if it's anything to do with the wet ball. Twice he certainly has looked down at his boot afterwards and certainly it's been Rivellino that's fallen two, three times when in possession. Perhaps his studs are not quite the same length as the other players. Mazzola then for Italy. The long chip aimed for Riva with Jazza Wilson bundling him from behind. And I think it's Riva who's going to get the word from the referee for backing into Jazza Wilson. Rudy Glockner down there arguing with everybody and Beck has given the free kick to Italy well I wouldn't have said it took place in that position but uh, Rudy Glockner is there on the spot and the entire Brazilian side is now clustered either around the ball or inside the penalty area Felix is on his right hand post as we look at it from here the Brazilian building a wall of seven players who are not yet ten yards from the ball. Luigi Riva is down there, number 11. Number 13 is Domingini, number 10 is Bertini. Riva with the shot, straight into the wall, straight appeal man. And that was number 10, Bertini, throwing it wide.
Carlos Alberto. Again, with plenty of space to move down this right side. Back for Brito, the oldest man in that back line, 30 years old. Gerson. Ah, uh, number five. The five, Chara, as Italians move forward again, trying to pull themselves back into this game. One nothing down still, the goal scored by Pele. Here's a Wilson. A Gerson, must use Everaldo. Italians chasing the Brazilians now, trying to hurry them and settle them. Knock them out of their stride. Number 16 to Sisi. Riva. Ball for Dominguini and he turned well on it. Bonisegna. Bonisegna with the shot then. Exactly the same sort of opening that he saw and grabbed so perfectly against West Germany. That time didn't go in the net. Italy playing quite well at the moment. Containing Brazil very, very well. It looks as though... They've just taken up their confidence after Pelé's goal, but I must say that Italy have created one or two very good shooting opportunities around the face of the box when they build up like they have been doing just recently. And uh, perhaps an encouraging sign for Italian support as the sun has just broken through the clouds. Mazzola going in on a half chance, and it took Brito number two and number eight, Gerson, to smear him down and whack that ball away into touch for a corner. Sandro Mazzola. A fine, entertaining player. Here's the corner for Italy. Felix having to punch. The chance for Di Sisi to... Uh, Bertini, sorry, to whack it back in again. And again, although it caused no trouble, it was noticeable then that Rico missed his header completely. The Brazilians not able to judge the flighty ball in the air as England showed in that game down at Guadalajara. Carlos Alberto. Just the tiniest bit of sun coming through over the Azteca Stadium here in Mexico City. Carlos Alberto for Gerson. Far side, Everaldo. Everaldo going to try one, but they're getting in the way of it. Foul by Pelé on number 16 to 60, who looks as though he could be a little bit hurt. Got it on the shin, getting up a little bit painfully. Meantime, Claudio Aldo is sending Brazil forward again. The offside flag is up as Pelé gets his head to it. Pelé. Now the linesman on this side. Dead in line, having given Pelé offside. About 12 minutes of this first half. Still to play. And that one goal by Pelé, the only margin of difference between the two sides at the moment. Mazzola, number 15. 16 to 16. The bad ball from Germagini. Gifting it away to the Brazilians at then, and the Italians having to scurry back. They'd thrown a lot of men forward then. It's Herzino. The sandwich. And finally, Facchetti. Herzino still going in. Now Pelé. For Tosseo. And Tosseo losing his feet as he tried to get the return. Sissi picking up Mazzola for Italy. Mazzola, you see, he's running on his right side. Wasn't a very good pass, easily robbed by Emeraldo. Gerson in support. Rivellino's running in the middle of the field, but it's Alberto first. Now it's Rivellino. Forward men here, Zino, Pelé, and Tosseo again. Rivellino, and again Rivellino having trouble with the old left foot. Tremendously powerful weapon of his. Looking to the bench and saying sorry to his coach. Gerard forward for DCC. Matsola 
as Reva getting the tackle pretty solidly from behind by Brito and Reva holding his ankle doesn't want the hard luck mate from Brito and the 16 to 50 inquiring of the referee why he hasn't taken a sterner action now it's Reva there's the left foot Luigi Riva limping still. Luigi Riva, the golden boy of Italian football. A man who has almost set off his own one-man revolution into new styles of football in Italy by scoring goals. Something the Italians have not seen a lot of in their league football in recent years. It's Herzino, number seven for Brazil. The foul, the tackle hard from behind by Rosato. Clodoaldo picking up Gerson, way on this side, Alberto. Hardly anybody on Mark forward. Pelé giving it a try, but couldn't get there. Pelé, who has been picked up by the number two man, Sosicio Bergnich, throughout the game. A little bit weak then from number 10 to CC. Brazilians quite happy with this 1 0 advantage at the moment. Continually playing at their own pace. Not but wasting their energy unnecessarily. Jerson. Picking up Brito. Skipper Carlos Alberto is over this side. There he goes again. Herzino. Herzino faced by Facchetti. Touch off Mazzola actually. Now to Pelé. Pelé in a very tight situation and Bergman's got to get away. Everaldo, way back there. Piazza Wilson. Picking up Rico. Clodo Aldo. Bonicini is through. Bonicini is through and he's out. A little chip. Riva now. Riva, Bonicini. Bonicini has done it. Bonicini. 1-1. And Bonicini, the man who scored the goal in the semi-finals, capitalizing on one mistake and making it uh, level scores at 1-1. Bobby Moore. A well taken goal by Anthony and I think fairly well deserved but here again we see this weakness in the Brazilian defence where Brito their centre back made another silly pass which was intercepted by the Italian forward and from the break they scored the goal to bring them level at one each here it is again Bonicenia chasing Riva is there to, number 11 it's Bonicenia's left foot as he curls that into the empty net and Felix still walking way back out of out of a note where he couldn't get at the ball at all. So Bonnie Senior, the chap who only got here because Anastasi, their star most highly priced, front runner, had a, an operation just a couple of weeks before Italy set out for these World Cup finals. Bonnie Senior, the surprise choice, comes in to score a vital goal against West Germany in the semi-finals and now a very vital one against Brazil here in the final. Free kick for Brazil. Rivellino with it. And... Albertozzi getting the one-handed punch. Riva Alvaraldo for Brazil. Again a mistake by Clodo Aldo. Handball given though. Bonicenia was chasing hopefully again. Well we said earlier that the sun had come out and the Italian fans were basking in the sunshine. Now they've got every right to as their side climbs back into the game. Clodo Aldo up very... Oh a terrible mistake then was Rosato getting the half-hit clearance. But Mazzola now. Chiara picking up Giovanni on the far side and he's unmarked. And this fellow's got the speed to get right inside everybody. The cross ball. He has a Wilson away. Everaldo completing it. Now Rivellino, number 11. I wonder what sort of unsettling effect that may have on the Brazilians. Certainly it's even Steven again. Carlos Alberto, number four, captain of this Brazilian side. Far side is Gerson. Gerson. Gerson still there. And finally it was Bertini, number ten, whacking it away for a corner. A 
now the Italians beginning to look around and pick up their men in the box as Rivellino, number 11 moves over to take the corner kick he's faced by number 10 who is very close to him Bertini Rivellino demanding that Bertini be retri retired the full 10 yards Pelé going up but he up, got up and hung and the ball didn't reach him Mazzola Mazzola faced by Herzino and now Pelé a good ball out for Facchetti short for Boris Senior the tackle from behind down the line and Bocinia really fell as Riva goes off. Play on as Italy have the advantage. Riva going around Brito. And a corner off Brito. And we've got two players laid out. As this corner kick is to be taken. Carlos Alberto on the left and number 20 Bonicenia on the right. But he's very much now, Bobby Moore, as though this game is going to spark into new life and new action. Very interesting situation at the moment. Brazil still find it very difficult to break down the Italian defence. But I feel that they could capitalise on the fact that Facchetti is following Jair everywhere. And when he's coming off of his line, Carlos Alberto is getting quite a lot of space. And I think this is one way they could find a way through the Brazilian defence, uh, through the Italian defence. But as I must say at the moment, Italy playing very, very well indeed and looking very, very dangerous. No, it's the makings of a really tremendous game. And another opportunity then for Italy to put extra pressure on this Brazilian back line as Mazzola lines up a corner kick. Facchetti. Mazzola. He's swinging across. Mazzola still trying to get the chip. The linesman's flag is up. Nobody could possibly be an off offside then, but the referee ignores it. Joe cutting out quickly is Rivellino. Rivellino, Trofeo is forward with him, but they're the only two men attacking at the moment. Rivellino in. Cross for Pelé, Rivellino again. And it has to come all the way back now to Clodoaldo. Now the Brazilians have their usual trio forward here. Zeno, Pelé and Trofeo inside the box. It's Pelé, Trofeo, Pelé going again. Cross for Jerson. Jerson number eight, firing just wide. But again, that sixth sense, cat sense that Pelé seemed to have. He had his back to Jerson. And yet he seemed to sense that he was there. Rolled the ball, the ball across his path as Jerson came in from behind. Chera picking up Domingini, right side. Two and a half minutes then to go to half time. Pelé and Bonicini are the scorers in a 1-1 tied situation here goes Bonicinia for Italy shaking hard can he get then well uh, I think if the ball had been left it would have gone for a goal kick Everaldo kicks it away so Bonicinia number 20 to throw in for Italy for Dicici Mazzola's in the box here's Giovanchini not a bad try well, that wasn't a bad shot from a long range, and Felix made real hard work of it. Once again, Alberto advancing down the right side for Brazil. Picking up Pelé. Way across, Gerson. Forward, Trasseo. And that little attack soon breaks down as Trasseo moves across the handle with the referee. Rivellino picking up Tosteo Tosteo faced by Rosato as usual upset by Rosato and the foul given Tosteo on the left his shot to his eye operation very nearly put him out of these 1970 finals after uh, he played so brilliantly in the qualifying game there's the yellow flag a red a red card Well, Rivellino is the man that the referee, Rudy Glockner, showed the red card to. I think it was a warning that if he did it again, he might get walking orders. Anyway, the situation tied it up. 
Free kick to Brazil, Gerson with it. Bertini, number 10. Close to him. Pelé, Pelé! Great appeal for penalties. But it's half time. Half time. Half time. Which seems to be a couple of seconds earlier than the clocks in the scoreboard here show. Well, there's some confusion as referee Rudy Glockner moves across. Now talking across to his linesman. The players are heading for the tunnel. Yes, indeed. It is half time. Well, that was most confusing. So as they go away for new orders, new instructions, we reflect backwards on a, an entertaining first half. Two good goals. That first one from Pelé. A simple situation, a magnificent header. And Italy looking to be out of the game then for quite some time until a bad mistake. Letting Bonny Senior in to make it 1-1. There's obviously a very great deal more left in this game. A great deal more left in it. And it's going to get more exciting in the second half. We'll be back now in the second half. So he's left it alone. Brazilians then lining up just to remind you of that scoreline. Pelé and Bonicinha, the two goal scorers, as Brazil kick off the second half of the 1970 World Cup final. Quick re-identification on colours. The Italians are playing in the white shorts and the very much darker jersey. And it's Brazil is now attacking the goal on the left. The goal, the goal net into which Bonnie Senya planted the equaliser. The 37th minute of the first half. Here's Justin for Brazil. Picking up Carlos Alberto. Pelé going in. And Pachetti away. This is being tackled by Pelé. Here's Mazzola. Zola across for Dolentini. The through ball. It's a good one too. Bonnie Senya. And Mazzola steaming like blazes. Just short of it though. But again, the gap opened up in the middle of that Brazilian back line. Here's Jerson. Decisi going with him. And Decisi getting the tackle in. Jerson looking quite slow as he went for the last three strides of his run. That was Bertini who finally put the ball into touch. Paseo with the throw in. Rivellino. A throw in situation. Remember it was a throw in that led to Brazil's first goal. Or only goal at the moment. Claudio Aldo. Going for Pelé. And hooked away there by Tatisio Burkic. Alberto right in behind them. Oh, and there was Pelé on the near post. I think he might have hit his head on the post as he went in. No, it was his wrist that uh, hit the post. Well, that was a let off, Bobby Moore. Here again, we saw Carlos, El Carlos Alberto coming around the flanks. He got to the ball and hit a very dangerous ball, look on. And if Shaya can keep taking Forgetti away from the line, then I'm certain uh, Brazil can make good use of this space. A nudge then from Bonicinha. A judge foul. The free kick just outside the edge of the box. Jerson. Jerson, whose leg injury in the, one of the warm-up games before the final started, threatened to keep him out of it altogether. Played that one game, the opening game of Brazil. Against Czechoslovakia, then missed two, England and Romania, but he's been back in, in the lineup ever since. Giovanghini for Italy. The long one for Mazzola here. Everaldo. I wonder now whether in fact... Oh, what a loose, loose ball. I wonder whether this chap Mazzola now has been given instructions to burn himself up for 20 minutes or so. And then send for Rivera. Certainly he's been playing further forward in this half. Vicenio. Mazzola going in hard with Everaldo. Yaza Wilson for Brazil. 
Brazilians have got three, six men deep in defense at the moment. Everaldo, the line ball for Sosteo. Oh, and surely the cut to be fast. Rosato getting up from the floor there. Number eight. Rosato from the AC Milan club. Chef they call Babyface, but uh, he's a pretty hard man when it goes in for the tackle. Shera for Domingini. Mazzola. And Jerson for Brazil, picking up Rivellino. Three men forward, Pelé, Erzino in the middle, and Tosteo's out on this left side. Erzino from behind by number 10 is Erzino, this powerful striking man who scored in every round of the World Cup competition here in Mexico. Number 11, Rivellino for Jerson, number 8. Through ball, Pelé trying to get to it. Claiming it was impeded and held back and very, very angry about things. Didn't you see what he did to me, boss, he says. Well, if referee Rudy Glutton saw anything, he didn't think it was unfair. You see, see number 16. Picking up Bertini. So in right on the halfway line where the big boom microphone bazooka microphone picks up the sound of the ball out on the field that's the time that's elapsed in the second half Mazzola picking up Riva Riva having a right old chase then with Clodoaldo Pelé here's Dino faced by Facchetti is still going now to Cici coming over, and finally Facchetti, Facchetti has way the touch. What a hard, strong, big fella this Hanzino is. Hanzino, tumbled down by, uh, Pele tumbled down by Facchetti. Uh, Berkic, got him right in a moment. Just as then. Over the ball. Cicci is being waved away. Rivellino has wound himself up on a sort of fast bowler's run up about 12 or 15 yards back. Here goes Rivellino now. And he really got hold of that one. Really got hold of it and bent it a whole lot. But the first time we've seen him really catch it right, Bobby. It's the first real good shot that Rivellino has hit. And I must have... Uh, probably feels much much better for it now we'll probably see him trying to hit the target much more often he goes just and then for brazil the one two off with Costello. pelly going in great appeal for a penalty and he's given an indirect free kick the upraised arm of referee rudy gluckner but a yard inside the box the entire italian team now clustering around him i don't think they're going to sway this east german came to this competition with just six internationals behind him. Can't really understand that decision at all. If he's given a free kick inside the penalty box now, it's got to be a penalty because it can be for nothing else other than dangerous kicking. And I can't under honestly understand how this situation can arise where someone's going to head the ball and someone's going to attempt to kick it and we see a free kick, indirect free kick, just inside the box. Ridiculous decision. Well, it's been done. So, the entire Italian team is now facing the ball inside their own penalty area. Number 10 over it at the moment is Pelé. Rivellino is there. Gerson is there. Rivellino is number 11. There's the shot the goalkeeper is going to see of it. Albertozzi. Pelé. Pelé to touch Gerson. Straight into the wall. And there was a certain amount of frustration about that free kick as Facchetti cuts out. Facchetti, one of the most entertaining attacking fullbacks of the business. Body senior. Mazzola running to his right. And a good bit of running here by Domingini. And it was deflected off Pepperaldo and very nearly in on the near post. Good bit of running by Domingini, though. The fabulous break by the cool the Brazilian defence in very, very 
small numbers. And I must say, a wonderful break on the outside by Domagini. Quite a good shot, which was deflected, nearly went into the net. Oh, the man who took the shot, Domagini, number 13, with the corner, the hard low one. And it's... Well, that was Rosato finally getting his head to it. And he comes from a long way back. But the pressure now eases off on that uh, goal net and this goalkeeper. Felix. Felix, 32 years old. The six goals put past him in five games and including today, that's seven in six games. Lodo Aldo, number five, is skipper Carlos Alberto again on that right side. Not whether Alberto has had this much freedom in any game that he's played in the competition so far. Clodo Aldo. Clodo Aldo looking for Pelé. For Theo, Pelé going in and it was Bergnitch away. There's Jerson in. Jerson now! For Theo trying to lay one off for Pelé. Would have done better if he turned on it himself. Brito feeding Carlos Alberto again for Brazil. Brazil beginning to exploit their skills. Bonistania coming way, way deep to pick the ball up for Italy. Domingini. And again running outside, you see Steve. Uh, Bertini, I think about it. Riva climbing up with Brito, number two. So it's Erzino now for Brazil. Sun still trying to force its way through the clouds. It's a lot brighter than it was a, an hour ago. Erzino picking up Gerson. Everaldo starting to move on the left side. Everaldo as Brazil now try to pick up the front runners, Paseo and Pele. Rivolino. Roberto Aldo as Carlos Alberto moves on the right side. Sofeo for Rivolino. Rivolino. Trying the left foot. Again, the Italians forcing Rivolino away from the path that he wanted to go to. Interesting to see the two contrasting styles in build-up. We see Italy breaking very, very quick from defence and looking dangerous. And then we see Brazil's slow, spectacular build-up. But at the same time, still getting the same results. Well, it's a chance now for Italy to see if they can explode again quickly. Mazzola for the TC. Mazzola going well, but it's the turn ball. Mazzola having to take the shot hurriedly. He was being hurried into his work by Piazza Wilson. There's Mazzola now. Certainly doing a lot more positive front running in the early stages of the second half. 33 minutes of this half left to play. And the deadlock to be broken still by one of these teams. Sofeo coming away from Rosato. Picking up Rivolino. Rivolino going hard and fast. And oh, indeed, he was certainly jumped from behind. Number 10, Mario Bertini. Referee Rudy Glockner right on the spot. But you didn't need to be very close to have seen that one. That one could have been picked up by any spectator in the top tier of this Azteca Stadium, 150 feet above the pitch level. Rivolino, the man who has been tumbled down. And wonders now whether the, uh, the blow to his ankle will have recovered quickly enough for him to try the left foot on this free kick. Pelé is number 10 over the ball. You can see the marks to the turf behind that ball where the tackle went in. Pelé is there and so is Rivolino, just to his right. Pelé. Well, he bent that one. But uh, bending it nearly meant missing the net and winding up high in the crowd. At least they give the ball back in this Azteca Stadium. Down in Guadalajara, they're not quite so uh, keen to give the ball back to the players. 16 deceitfuls. Only five foot six of him, but he gets through a tremendous amount of graft. Captain of his own club, Fiorentina. Clodoaldo. Sale. Justin, the tackle coming from Mazzola. 
And the tackle was fouled. Free kick quickly taken. Here's Gerzino. Again, faced by his shadow, Facchetti. But they are laying it off for and Facchetti using his arms to grab Erzino as he went on that one-two off Tarteo. Free kick situation again. And again the Italians waving their players back. We shall have another situation with ten men between the ball and goalkeeper Albertozzi. Five men in the wall at the moment. Domenghini makes it six. And four men on the loose right side of the wall as you look at it now. Pelé, number 10, Rivellina, number 11, and Jerson, number 8, are all clustered around. Going to take some part in this Brazilian free kick. And it's Rivellina, right foot, hit the bar! Goal kick. Well, that was a surprise, Bobby Moore. Rivellino showed us the right foot for a change. It's the first time I've seen his right foot in action in the tournament, I think. But very, very effective. And the one who doesn't use it more often. A very good free kick there. A good shot at goal. And just a little bit unfortunate not to, not to be another goal. So, German Giddy as Mazzola comes forward again. The Italians still searching to break this deadlock. Still 1-1. One, one. Delta Wilson picking up Rivellino. Rivellino is struck way down around his ankles. Did a lot of criticism by players of the turf and length of grass here in the Aztec Stadium. Here's Carlos Alberto. Costello in, Pelle chasing. But that's the goalkeeper's ball. Brito just shepherding the ball into touch. 15 minutes of the Second half gone. Claudio Aldo. Claudio Aldo who looks a little tired in this second second half. As Alberto again going deep inside this defense. Pelé. Pelé is barged off the ball by Bertnich. Sassicio Bertnich. And again a free kick right outside the box. Bertnich a very strong player, 31 years old. This is his 37th international today. Plays for Inter Milan, like uh, the Italian skipper, Facchetti. But both of them know each other's style. They play in the two same positions for their club as their country. And he's a pretty hard customer, and he's Castillo Bergnich. Just it over the ball. Pelé likely to his right, and the man nearest that. Number five, Toto Aldo. But it looks as though Rivellino is lining himself up again to go with the left foot. Here it is. And Rivellino running straight into Riva number 11, claiming he was fouled after the ball had gone. And in fact, and in fact the referee has given, given a foul. Well, to me that looks as though Rivellino just ran straight into Riva, having completed his free kick. The referee Rudy Glockner deep in that bundle of uh, angry gesticulating players. We now have everybody down there except the two goalkeepers. Felix is alone in his half of the field. Albertozzi's on his line and the other two 20, 22 players are practically all in your picture at this moment. Uh, at last Rico has retired from the scene to take up position on the halfway line but uh, we've now got nine Brazilians down there. 11 Italian. Here's the free kick. Rivellino straight into the wall. Gerson trying it. Everaldo now, number 16. Taken down by Bertini. Bertini breaking out. Brought down. The free kick's been given. And the game at this moment looking like something on a, a park pitch on a Sunday morning with everybody chasing around after the ball. Looking very much as though it needs a strong man. A player, Mark, you, not a referee, a strong man to go down there and sort these votes out and get them playing skilled, cultured, entertaining football again. So, a free kick to Italy. Giusti. Two ball for Mazzola. Pacchetti. Pacchetti, a man who scored 
more goals in Italian football than most forwards. What is Senia aiming for Riva? And he did, didn't do badly with it. Came on the near post, but it could be gone for the far post. It had got it in the net, but it's gone for a corner anyway. Interesting to see that the Brazilians are trying all the tricks they know. They're falling at every opportunity. They're trying to take goal kicks when it's cornered. And I wonder if this is signs of frustration. But Italy at the moment looks doing very, very well to contain the Brazilian pressure. It's here, number 13. Mazzola. Oh, what a feeble punch by this goalkeeper, Felix. What an incredible man to have behind you if you're a defender of this brilliant Brazilian side. Not exactly the way to influence defenders, making friends and influencing defenders. Here's Gerson looking for Alberto on the right side. Once again, the number four man coming into the picture. Number five is Clodoaldo. Way back to Gerson, who started the movement. Brazilians build up again, very slow. Clodoaldo, Alberto is saying he doesn't want it this time. Now he does. And Tosteo going in, getting just ahead to it, but not able to direct it where he wanted to. Tosteo, who's going to Houston, Texas, after this competition is over, to have the eye operation inspected. Possibly another one. A good opportunity there for Tosteo from another good cross by Alberto, but I don't think Tosteo jumped with much conviction that they expected to get the ball. But otherwise, a very, very good opportunity. If they'd have really gone for it, it could have been a very dangerous situation. Again, the foul given against Italy. Gerson taking it, picking up Carlos Alberto. So Duel is going over to join him. But Gerson is free in the middle. That's a good ball to set the left side going now. Everaldo. Gerzino. Gerzino faced by Sacchetti. Here goes Gerson. And a good shot! What a beautiful goal by Jason! Jason really cracking that ball on the turn, scoring the second goal for Brazil, his first goal of the World Cup Finals here in Mexico. And the Brazilians going wild about it, Bobby Moore. A brilliantly taken goal by Jason. It's been interesting to know that just recently he's been coming uh, forward much more often. And here we can see it in slow motion. Joyas goes to take the catch on and forget he does very well. He makes a tackle and Italy probably considers themselves a little bit unfortunate. The Brazil got the break, the ball goes to guess, and now we can see his shot. So right across the face of the keeper into the final. So Brazil back in the league, two goals to one. So there's the, there's the score line. Pelé getting the first and now Jerson getting the second. A really great and tremendous goal and getting Italy. Everything to do all over again now. There's the foul against number 13. Bonnie Senia brought... Uh, Domingini brought down by 16, Everaldo. And Domingini with the free kick himself. That well, was uh, an ambitious try, trying to strike the hard one. Low for the near post, catching Felix unawares. I just always worth trying with this goalkeeper, all sorts of things catch him unawares. And now the Mexican fans churning it out. Brazil, Brazil, Brazil. Brazil looking at this moment now as though they may very well be going on to capitalize on the win in Sweden in 1958. So we Win in Chile, 1962. A win today will give them the Jules Rimei trophy forever. Here's Gerson now, the man who suddenly made this game all of, all alive for the Brazilian fans. Oh, and number 13, number 13, Domingini, pushing. The traders dashing on. Looks like... Looks like... Uh, 
fellow down there in the middle of it who threw himself backwards when Domandini just casually pushed it away with both hands. The Brazilians are demanding that Domandini, number 13, be sent off. Rudy Glockner refusing to allow anybody onto the field. As Pelé very quickly gets back to his feet again. Exactly what Bobby Moore was saying just now. The Brazilians acting and looking for every every advantage they can capitalize on. Carlos Alberto for Justin. Justin again with the long one. Well, that goal may have gone to Justin's head of it. Fellow who started his big international career in the 1960 Olympics. Italians now with 20 minutes left, 21 minutes left of this game. If they want to stay in with a chance of picking up the Jules Rimet trophy for themselves. Bertini. Picking up Jonah Giddy. Rob Fight. Ballet. And Pele flying through the air. Number 13, Jonathan Guinea. Again, the guilty party, but again, Pele doing almost the dive of death. Bertini kicking the ball straight into Rivellino. He'll have a word from the referee. It's a pity we have to see such silly incidents in a, in a game like the World Cup final. I think the referee's in danger of losing control of the match at the moment. It's a pity he can't get a, get, get a grip of things and let's get things sorted out and let's start playing again because it's silly to have such incidents happening in such a showpiece as this. Certainly the Brazilians trying, this, trying it on with the referee as much as they possibly can. Again a free kick then, Gerson aiming into the box for Pelé and he's in behind everybody and shows up for Giazzino! And he's walked it into the net. Jairzino keeps his goal game record going. It's 3-1 Brazil. And you have never seen a happier fella then than Jairzino. There's 19 minutes, 19 and a half minutes of this game left. As Brazil take what looks to me a pretty substantial lead now. I think that's the goal that's going to clinch it for Brazil. We can see this one come from the free kick that we were just talking about a little while ago on the halfway line. A long ball by Gerson to the far post. Pelican finds a bit of freedom and has a lovely little headed cushion pass across the face of the goal where Giazzino runs it into the net. Albertosi, the Italian goalkeeper, went more for the shot and it just trickled into the net to put Brazil 3-1 into the lead. And there he is, Giazzino, as we go back into the game again live. Erzino keeping his goal a game record going. This then his sixth game in the competition. Scored in every single one of them. And Brazil now having excited this crowd. A crowd of basically Mexican Mexican football supporters who have been committed to the Brazilian cause even before the competition started here in Mexico. Now picking it up. Brazil, Brazil. Rivellino then for Claudio Aldo. Claudio Aldo trying one. Rivellino. Rivellino going again, jumping over the one tackle. Jerson, Jerson on the left foot. Now Brazil beginning to explode and exploit and entertain. Matola going, pushing his own man Riva out of the way. Matola, Riva. Good saving tackle in by Brito, number two. Number five, Clodo Aldo. Chapman was looking a bit tired a little earlier on, but I should think those two goals have livened him up. Carlos Alberto, number four. The line ball to Herzino. Herzino facing Facchetti. Taking him on, Castello, and finally has you know, clawed from behind by Sacchetti. No foul given, though. Desisti, number 16. Facing Pele. Picking up Rosato. Bertini. Bertini still there with it. 
Rossini trying it all the way on his own. There's a Wilson tidying up for Brazil. No real danger. Ball out for Rivalino. Rivalino. Roto Aldo is close to him. Gerson is now opening himself up in midfield again. Brazilians again quite happy to walk and slow the game down. Pelé. Roto Aldo. Rivalino. Rivalino. Running straight into Desisti. And it looks very much as though could be Bonnie Senior. No, it's not Bonnie Senior. Stretched out on the halfway line. He went down in agony while the game was still going on. It was Bertini, number 10. Mario Bertini. And immediately we've got a substitution. Number 18 is on. Giuliano. There he is, reporting to referee Glockner. Giuliano, Antonio Giuliano from the Naples club. Who's basically a forward. Replacing Bertini, Mario Bertini, a midfield player. Indirect free kick has been given to the Brazilians. So it's number eight over the ball, Jerson. Looking behind is number ten. Here's Pele. Oh, and Pele really not showing the fine accuracy that we know he can do. Pele, the scorer over a thousand goals in football, playing in his fourth World Cup and heading now for what looks like being his second gold medal. Number five, Chera. Chera again. Chera for the substitute, Giuliano. Chera for Rosato. Picking up Domingini. Mazzola. Mazzola. Follow with the skills to do it. Here's Riva. Riva trying to turn to get it on the left foot. Back hand. Number 18, Giuliano running outside him and could have stroked the ball into his path if he played it directly. There goes Riva in with Everaldo. Rivalino for Everaldo. Rivalino having to run a long way for this one. But these players quite happy to run and chase for the ball regardless of the altitude or the humidity here. You can't say that it's really hot, but it's very, very humid. Rivalino. Everaldo. Thirteen and a half minutes of the game left. Brazil with a very comforting 3-1 lead. Exactly the same score they scored against Czechoslovakia in 1962 when they last won the World Cup. And I should think they'll be pretty happy to finish that game with the same score. The challenge by Chera. Herzino. Through ball for Toseo, who's looking for the layoff ball again to Herzino. Dragging Pacchetti to the wing. Shadow number five is in support over there. Nobody close to Herzino for this throw in. Now Pelle's coming to it. Back to Carlos Alberto. Rodualdo. Rodualdo. Now Jerson just yards short of him, and he gets it again. Rivellino outside on the left. Dan Rivellino triggering off the left, the left hammer boot of his, and not getting on target with it. A good opportunity for Rivellino, and they did make a very good attempt at golf. So it would be interesting to see Brazil's tactics in the last 10 minutes or so, whether they still decide to go for goals or whether they try to lock up the game. But it's Senior going in hard and fast. And it was Rito number two whacking the ball away and now squaring up to number 20, Bonnie Senior. He was saying that he got something on the head. 
Bisisi then. For Italy. For Insignia. And Insignia trying the left foot on the turn. Felix has come well off his line that time. Onto the six yard line. There's the score line. The score line dramatically changed by Gerson and Giardino. Just Gerson himself, the man who put the Brazilian's noses in front. Clodo Aldo. Brazilians again looking for another goal yet. Gerzino, the man who might get it. Pelé, Tadeo, here goes Pelé! What a fantastic save. The linesman's flag was up for offside. But it was a great save by Albertozzi just the same. Domingini, number 13. Tadeo deep to cut it out. Gerson now. Picking up Clodo Aldo. Here's Zeno for Carlos Alberto. The Italians looking, I'm afraid, a beaten side at the moment. The Brazilians beginning to bewitch them with their ball trickery. There goes Herzino. Sassau trying to lay it back for Pelé. And Bergnich, what a great game this like Bergnich has been having, got the tackle in. Piazza Wilson with Ravine, Lino open. Rivellino at walking pace now. Sassao fouling Rosato. And here we have number 18, Giuliano. Substitute. Matola calling for it. And he could try one here. Now looking inside for Riva, number 18, Giuliano. Riva challenging. If he can turn, Bonny Senior. But he's sitting here dragging Carlos Alberto away at all. A very, very wild, wild piece of football then by Bunny Senior. The Italians put on a fair bit of pressure on that Brazilian back line and had him at panic station and should have capitalized a little better than that on it. So the Brazilian ease the pressure off. As the Brazilians come forward again, the thought going through our minds, Bobby Moore is what in fact can the Italians do to get right back into this game now? Well, I think they've got to score very, very quickly because at the moment one or two of their chins have sunk a little bit and they're, they're finding things very difficult. But I think they've got to be keep composed because at least they're creating one or two opportunities when they are playing their own football and not just throwing everything in haphazardly. Well, the Brazil's going up again. Rivellino. Rivellino. Now Carlos Alberto. Brazilians just not letting the Italians get set for anything at the moment. Everaldo has just moved down the left side. What a beautiful ball to him, too. Just over Sassel offside, surely. Well, he looked to be in behind them. There was no flag, but it didn't produce a goal anyway. Facchetti, who's done no attacking in this game, really, to talk about. So he is an exciting, attractive attacking fullback. He's had far too much to do at the back to get forward. Mazzola. Through ball aimed for Riva, but that's the goalkeeper's ball. He came slowly. Gaza Wilson. Number 11, Rivellino. Soto Aldo. Carlos Alberto. Alberto. Sosteo is there. Now Pele. Nobody to Pelé's left, it's all right side. And there goes Pelé for the return ball, well cut out. Jomandini. Taken over by Mazzola. Riva. Bonisegna. Riva moving forward. Oh, and a weak one then, straight into the stomach of Clodo Aldo. Clodo Aldo now, only one Brazilian forward with him is Pelé. So he slows things down to wait for others to join in. Pelé over to him. There's Zeno going through the middle and on this far side, Everaldo breaking. Everaldo going all the way on his own. Took it just that yard too far and in fact got the boot into Albertozzi's players. Time ticking away from this clock. 
Time ticking away, about six and a half minutes left now for the Italians. Although I doubt very much whether the presentation will be made in six and a half minutes. We understand it here, there'll be quite a fulsome ceremony to go through before the actual presentations of the trophies are made. Flags of all nations and that sort of thing. Now we have another substitution for the Italians doing that hold up. Rivera is on. Rivera is on and Bonestina is on. So the golden boy of Italian football, European footballer of the year, Gianni Rivera is on the park. With about six minutes to set this game alight for the Italian. Rosario running well, but that's Felix is all. Jerson. As the Brazil set off another springboard attack from six men deep in defense. Four defenders across the park. Jerson losing it. Now, number 11 is Riva, the bloke who could do the damage with the foot. Here's Rivera. Mazzola just unable to get to it. Jerson just away anywhere. It's over five minutes left as the Italians attack a 3-1 deficit at the moment. 15, Mazzola, Mazzola taking on Carlos Alberto, and now Domenghini. Well, again, the Italians causing the Brazilians to argue amongst themselves in defense. Incredible to think that the team that relies so heavily on its forward should have a suspect back line, but it is a suspect back line that looks as though it's going to win the World Cup for Brazil or hang on to the lead, rather, that the talented forwards have secured for them. Jerson then, picking up Everaldo. The line ball, aim for Rivellino. Well, it's late in the game now, but it's long enough for Rivera to change the course for Italy. I very much doubt it. They look very, very tired at the moment, Italy. They had a very hard game in the semi-finals against West Germany where they had to play extra time. They're possibly having some effect on them now. When Brazil get into a situation like this, they're very, very difficult to beat. Yes, it would be cruel to say it, but uh, giving away a two-goal advantage could only happen once in the 1970 World Cup. And you know who did that. I don't think Brazil are going to do it here. Erzino, faced by Facchetti. Oh, that's not a bad ball for Pelle on the right side. It's Carlos Alberto. And what a great goal that was. <laughs> Carlos Alberto puts this game surely well beyond the reach of almost any side now. 4-1 with three and a half minutes of the game left. Carlos Alberto scores his first goal of the competition. That is the whole of the 1970 competition. A great bit of running, a fine ball from Pele, Bobby Moore. A wonderful goal there by Brazil. Good school show and a, a very, very well-deserved goal by Carlos Alberto. He's worked very, very hard this afternoon, trying to exploit the space that's been created on the right wing. And at last he's got something which is deserved for it. A very, very well-taken goal. I think the game is now completely over. Brazil four, four goals to one in the lead with just two minutes left to play. Well, there it is. Carlos Alberto making it 4-1. And with about 2 minutes and 45 seconds of this game, I suppose just one target left for Brazil to equal the five goals they scored against Sweden in 1958 in Stockholm when they first won the World Cup. Oops, and Felix making hard work of that shot from Rivera, number 14 of Italy. Brazil, who scored their 100th goal of the in World Cup competitions this afternoon. Now setting, let us hope perhaps, new standards, new patterns for football league managers to follow. Right, entertaining forwards. And the devil take the hindmost at the back. Brazil then with another free kick. And just two minutes left of the 1970 World Cup final. 
Well, at his side is Rivellino, but he won't get there. Domingini. Very tired Italians moving forward now. Pele all the way back to his own goalkeeper. Pele, who's only goal left in uh, international football, or any class of football, I suppose, is to score that direct goal from the halfway line. Mazzola going in on this half ball as the Brazilians stroke it about now. Carlos Alberto, the captain. What a fitting climax for his 1970 World Cup performance. 18, Giuliano. And there goes Rivellino again. Rivellino going all the way on his own. Stumbled down. And a desperate appeal for a penalty, which Rudy Glockner waves away. Well, I suppose the team leading 4-1 doesn't really need to complain too bitterly about that. Although it didn't look very good. Number 14, Rivera. Rivera, the skilled ball artist who was playing in Olympic football and Italian league football at 16 years old. Looking up at the clock here in the stadium now, the seconds ticking away. Less than 30 seconds to go. Less than 30 seconds. To go between the uh, World Cup leaving the stadium for Brazil for Keith. Here's Italy moving forward again. Riva. Riva turning onto it. Now chance for Bonicilia. Sorry, Domingini from the 13. Domingini whacking that high, wide, and not many hands come into the crowd. There's no time left on the clock up here now. Brazilian fans are waving their flags. Photographers tearing down to get pictures of the final celebration. The band ready to march on. Referee Rudy Glockner wants that ball back from the crowd. The crowd won't give it to them. Somebody in there has got a, a souvenir of the 1970 World Cup final. The players, players demanding. There's no, Please, can we have our ball back? But it's not going to come. They're going to have to send for another one. And I should think there's about time for a goal kick to be taken and nothing much more. But still some Brazilian fan, I would suspect, up in the... In the oh, indeed, at last he has thrown it back. There it is. The ball has come down. Felix has got hold of it. There's the time that we played in this second half. As one Brazilian fan goes chasing out onto the pitch. Now the ground has just got into complete pandemonium. Referee Rudy Glockner will have to get well on top of this now. There are hundreds of photographers down there, spectators, and there are people being chased all over the field. There are players on the box. There are spectators on the box. There are now policemen on the box. Now everybody's on the box. The game is over. Brazil have won it. Pelé is being mobbed. Deep under the whole lot of that lot is Pelé, El Gran Pelé, the, the fantastic man who is winning his second medal in the World Cup competition and this, his fourth World Cup competition, a fellow who burst into the scene in 1958 as a 17-year-old, scoring two goals in that final. Now he's scored the vital starting goal of this game. Goal number 100 for Brazil in the World Cup Championship of 1970. And deep under that lot, he's being mobbed by everybody. Players still being mobbed and heading now for the tunnel and probably more. What about the scenes down there at the moment? Well, we're really wonderful scenes. Fabulous feelings for the players. I think Brazil thoroughly deserve their uh, victory, put a lot of pressure on it, Italy during the second half, but I must say a most enjoyable fight and a wonderful fight by Italy. They worked tremendously hard all afternoon to try and contain the Brazilian forwards and that, have, have done a very, very good job at it, but I think it took their toll when they when they scored their second goal from Gerson midway through the second half, but as I say, a wonderful game, wonderful team and a really memorable final. So there is that fantastic stadium. Raising now, throwing firecrackers deep out into the arena, which is a beating mass of people. Flags, Brazilian supporters, firecrackers, 
And deep under there somewhere are the stars of the 1970 World Cup final. Deep under there somewhere is Pele. It looks very much as though the players have been shepherded away at last towards the uh, tunnel area. And there's going to be quite some delay before the final presentation is given. Although now players are heading towards the area underneath us. Dancing, dancing Brazilian players, their supporters, everybody down there is all for Brazil. There's something that has been happening here in, in Mexico City right through to everything started. The Mexicans have been dying for Brazil to win the World Cup and this whole city of Mexico City is going to go wild tonight. The Zocalo Square quite definitely is going to be an arena of fiesta time in Mexico City tonight. If they are going to present the cup, it's going to be quite some time because none of those players are wanting to come in here at the moment. Now with me, Billy Wright, who's shared the commentaries for most of the games throughout the series. Billy, looking down on those things, what's going through your mind at this moment? Well, the tremendous, the tremendous bill that I have is seeing the last half hour of our Brazilian play because the Italians, for that period before, contained them, as Bob, you said. But after that, once Gerson got that wonderful goal, then there was no stopping these great Brazilians. And as you see, the Cup has come to South America again, and then all the players, the Brazilians especially, must be on top of the world. But I feel a little bit sorry for the Italians who played so well through many parts of the game. Throw down there. Somewhere in the block of that match is Zagallo. Zagallo, the new manager of Brazil, the man who took over when Saganar was sacked, the man who has guided this Brazilian team to their third World Cup final win. Zagallo, a man who himself played in the 1968 series and outside left with that fabulous little man, Pele, a 17-year-old kid at the time, scoring two goals in the game. Now Zagallo, who also scored in that game. Zagallo has led his Brazilians with the fellow that he once played alongside, Pele, to the final. Now, at last, Brazilian players are being headed towards the dressing room so that the actual celebration, the actual presentation of the cup can take place. But what a game this has been, and I hope you have enjoyed it.